In most cases, it's necessary to simplify GIS data before exporting it from ArcMap for use in Illustrator. So to start with, let's work with some countries. We have here European countries, and if we just want to make a map using a few different countries, let's say France and Spain and Portugal down here, we can use the selection tool, which is this arrow with a little cyan polygon selected up here. If I click on that, then I can just click on different polygons. So there I've just selected France. I'm holding the shift key, and I'm going to select Spain and then Portugal. So now I've got the three of those selected, and if I want to make a new file out of just those countries, I can come over to my country layer in the data frame here. I'm going to right click on country and come down to data and say export data. I want to be exporting the selected features because I have things selected, it automatically chooses that option. Then I'm going to browse for a location to put that. So I've got this folder on my W drive, and I'm just going to export a new shape file called France. Spain and Portugal. So this will be saved as a new file, a new shape file in that folder. I hit save and then OK. And then it's going to export those three features. And it asks me if I want to add that exported data to the new map as a layer, and I'll say yes. So here we have a new shape file you see popping up in the table of contents, and those are the blue shapes right there. To, uh, to deselect, I'm just going to hit the deselect button up here that says clear selected features. So the next way that we can select information uh, is with either using the attributes of features or the location of features. I'm going to turn on cities. I've got this layer for cities that you can see is really dense. It's drawing slowly because it has so many points in it. We want to do a couple of things over the next few steps. We want to first select only the cities that are in France and Spain and Portugal because those are the areas that we're working with. And then after that we want to select just a few of those cities. We want to simplify the number of cities that it's drawn. So to start with, let's select by location, and that's going to help us select just the cities within France, Spain, and Portugal. So if I come up to my selection menu here, and drop that down and say select by location, I get this menu that allows me to choose a selection method. I'm going to select features from, in this case, the city layer. And then I have a source layer, which is going to provide the spatial extent of the area that I'm selecting from. So I'm going to say my source layer is France, Spain, and Portugal. And I want to choose this option that the target layer features are intersecting the source layer feature. There are a bunch of different options here for how you can select by location, but intersection is the simplest of those. And basically that will just select any of the points that fall within France, Spain, and Portugal. So I'll just hit OK. And this will probably take it a little while because it's actually going to calculate the position of every single one of those points and decide whether or not it falls within the polygon of either France, Spain, or Portugal. So just to speed things up, I cut out that section where it was selecting. It took a few minutes, but now we have all of the cities in France and Spain and Portugal selected uh, out of this cities layer right here. Now what I'm going to do to get this selection into its own layer is come up to the Cities data layer and then go to Selection here and then click on Create Layer from Selected Features. I'll just click on there. And now we have this new layer called City Selection. This didn't make a new file, but it just made a layer that was based on this Cities file. And now we can go ahead and deselect. And if we open the attribute table for this new Cities Selection you can see that it only contains the cities from France and Spain and Portugal. If we go down through there, it's got many fewer cities in it than the whole cities file. Now I'm going to show you how you can further reduce the number of cities on your map, further simplify the map by reducing it to just the largest cities. Here in the table for the cities selection, so these are just the cities in France and Spain and Portugal, if I scroll way over to the other side, you can see that there's an attribute for population class. And the largest cities have a population class of 1, and then the smaller cities have a, large, or a, a higher population class. And in fact, a lot of these small places, we don't even know what those populations are. We just know that they're pretty small. So we want to do a selection by attribute so that we only have the population class 1, the highest class of cities in France and Spain and Portugal showing on the map. So to do that, we're going to come up to Selection and Select by Attributes. We'll be working with the layer City Selection, and here are all the attributes that are associated with that layer. But we want to work specifically with Population Class, this attribute right here. So if I double click on that, we start building this query down here that's expressed in what's called Structured Query Language, or SQL. So we want all of the cities where P class, which is in quotes, is less than 2. 
and that will get all the cities where the p-class is equal to 1. We could have said equal to 1 or we could have said equal uh, less than or equal to 1. There are a variety of different ways that we could have made this, this uh, structured query statement. If we hit OK, you can see that whereas the, the select by location took a few minutes, this is going to take probably less than 30 seconds in order to select all of the cities in the city selection, again just the cities in France and Spain and Portugal, that have a p-class of 1. You can see that they're selected here on the map with the cyan dots. They're also selected here in the table. So I'll close the table, close the select by attribute box, and then again to have just this even smaller subset of cities as an independent file or as an independent layer, I'm going to right click and come to selection and say create layer from the selected features. And I'm going to rename that layer to say, go to the general properties over here and make the layer name large cities. I'll deselect that. And now if we turn off the city selection, you can see we've got just a few different cities interspersed within those three countries. Another way that we could have gotten just the large cities on our map is by using something called the definition query. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to turn our new large cities layer off and turn just the regular cities selection back on. Again, the city selection is going to be all of the cities in France and Spain and Portugal. And then I'm going to go and right click on that layer and go to the properties and there's a tab for definition query. A definition query again uses an SQL statement or a structured query language statement to reduce the number of features that are being displayed for a given layer. So if we go into the query builder here and we start building our query, I'll go all the way down to P class, double click on that, and then I'll just make the same query. I'm going to say P class is less than two and then hit OK and hit OK again and you can see that the city selection layer has now been filtered so that it includes only those cities that have a P class of less than two. So we had, again, two different methods of achieving the same result. We used a definition query in order to select out just the largest cities out of the entire city selection layer, or we used select by attribute and then made a new layer out of it in order to get just those largest cities in a slightly different way. Now let's take a look at how we can organize our data based on symbology. So to do that, I'm going to come up to highways here, turn that on, and you can see that there are a lot of highways in Europe, and we like to not only reduce the number that are displayed, but also maybe show the difference between different types of highways. So the largest highways, and then the medium-sized ones, and then maybe some smaller ones. So to start out with, I'm going to practice using select by location in order to get just the highways that are in France, Spain, and Portugal. I'll come up to selection, say select by location. I'm going to select features from the highways, and then I'm going to select those features which are inside of this layer, France, Spain, and Portugal. I'll click OK, and this will work its, work its way through for a few minutes. Just like last time, that took a few minutes, and I cut it out so that we wouldn't just be sitting here waiting for it. You can see that the roads in France and Spain and Portugal have been selected, and now I can just come up to highways, into data, and export data and save that as a new shapefile. I do want to add that exported data as to the map as a layer. And now that we have a France, Spain, and Portugal highways layer, I can go ahead and remove that old highways layer. So now if I want to change the symbology of these roads so that I'm including only the largest roads and then also differentiating between larger and somewhat smaller roads, I can come over to that data layer, right click on it, and then go to properties. And in there, there's a symbology tab. Right now, it's symbolizing all of the symbols using this single symbol type. And I'd rather make categories. So I'm going to click on categories. And I can make categories based on the class of that highway. So if I click on class, that's the attribute in the attribute table that it's going to start making our symbology based on. And then go to add all values. It will search through all of the records and find out what all of the unique classes are in the attribute table for all of those records. There are 14 different classes. In order to simplify the number that we're going to be seeing on our map, I'm going to select starting with 3 here and hold shift and go down to 14 and say remove. So it won't draw those classes on the map. And then I'm going to uncheck this all other values symbol so that it's not just drawing all the ones that aren't either 0, 1, or 2 with this generic symbol. And if I click OK, you can see my table of contents updates, so it's got a little legend, and you can see on my map that we now have this network of the largest roads, which are pink, and followed by two sort of secondary classes of roads. 